we're back with a second look at Snake Pass, and this time we have more details on the creation of the game, and a look at every other version that we missed the first time around. Wondering how it runs on Xbox One? What the new patch on Switch adds? Or how quickly the team could get the game running on Nintendo's new console? It's all here and more. Let's get started. Snake Pass is a bright, colorful game, and a deceptively complex one as well. There is a lot going on under the hood which pushes hardware further than you might expect. One key element centers on the snake, named Noodle, and the physics simulation. The basic idea stems from Sebastian Lisa's experience in learning Unreal Engine 4, where he created an interactive rope of sorts using Unreal's blueprint system. This idea manifested during an internal game jam, and the idea impressed enough folks within the studio that it was greenlit for proper development. But simulating a snake is no simple thing. Noodle's physics are driven by unreal physics systems, and a lot of things needed to be considered. As a snake gliding across multiple surface types, friction is taken into account, with Noodle sliding differently across various materials. When Noodle crosses over his own body, for instance, he glides smoothly, while rough stonework introduces friction into the mix, which changes how he reacts. This plays a key role in determining how the game plays. Snakes are also very muscular creatures, and Noodle is no exception. He's broken up into a collection of different points, which all work together to help simulate muscle, and even weight distribution is taken into account. His tail, for instance, is lighter than his head. Throughout all of this then, collision plays a significant role in keeping the interactions grounded and realistic. Then there is the grass. The developers took inspiration from colorful classics such as Sonic or Donkey Kong Country by bringing lush green fields to life in Snake Pass. But doing so in 3D is a challenge. Unreal already features a robust foliage system, but the team worked hard to tweak and improve the results for Snake Pass. At most, roughly 30% of GPU time is reserved for grass rendering, which is a lot, and all of this grass sways and reacts to both wind forces and the snake itself. Beyond that, grass shadows are present across each level, though these tend to be disabled at a greater distance to save on resources. The density and distance at which the grass is drawn varies per platform, where Unreal's scalability features help optimize performance in each case. Between the grass and physics simulation, you can begin to understand how this game is more demanding than you might first believe. The rest of the environment then is equally impressive, with highly detailed meshes used to build the world, enabling smooth surfaces throughout. The world is lit entirely in real time here without relying on any sort of pre-calculated lighting, and this lighting is kept at the highest quality level across all platforms. When everything comes together, the end results are certainly striking. One thing that really impresses us about the development of Snake Pass and Unreal Engine 4 itself lies in how quickly the game was brought over to the Nintendo Switch. Unreal allows developers to easily work across multiple platforms, but official support for Nintendo Switch was only added this past February. According to Sumo Digital then, the team was given early access to Switch support in the engine, and in just two days, the game was up and running at a basic level on the new machine. Basically, by taking advantage of the Unreal platform, the team was able to bring Snake Pass to the Switch on a very tight schedule, which is very good news for the future of the platform. While we're on the topic of Switch, since our last look at the game, it has received a patch. Just as we expected based on the capture we received from Sumo last week then, this patch updates the handheld mode of the game with support for depth of field during cutscenes, which is nice of course. Shadow maps are also improved and much closer to the original console releases, and in fact maybe even appear a little bit sharper. Beyond that, the rumble feature was also improved and no longer vibrates wildly when slithering around on certain surfaces. Unfortunately, the issue with frame pacing remains a problem, and after playing further, we uncovered additional slowdown in some of the later levels. Still, the overall experience of playing Snake Pass on the Switch is generally quite positive, and it was great having the game available on the go. It's just a really engaging portable game. Jumping back into the multi-platform comparisons, let's look at the remaining versions of Snake Pass, starting with Xbox One. Snake Pass looks great on the Xbox One and features the same 1536x864 resolution as PlayStation 4. 
That's right, we have full resolution parity here between Xbox and PS4. But that doesn't mean that there aren't minor differences to be found if you look a little closer. The water ripple shader, for instance, that we noticed missing on Nintendo's Switch is also absent on the Xbox One. Though of course the water caustics effect is actually present on Microsoft's console. On the flip side, grass density appears fuller on Xbox One without the visible empty spots that we noticed on PlayStation 4, but both consoles draw foliage out to roughly the same distance. Unfortunately, loading times are an issue on Microsoft's machine. With both games installed to the default hard drives included in the systems, Snake Pass requires more than double the amount of time to finish loading, coming in at more than 34 seconds. We tested this on both a standard Xbox One and of course the Xbox One S. The footage used here is taken from an S. Considering the pick up and play nature of Snake Pass, this is the one blemish on an otherwise great port of the game. Aside from these differences then, the rest of the visuals appear virtually identical between the two. Shadow quality is completely identical here and matches up with the medium setting on PC, which we'll be looking at shortly. Post-processing is equal between the two versions, with depth of field present both during cutscenes and in-game. There is a subtle difference in anti-aliasing quality, but both work well enough. The low resolution definitely has an impact on clarity, but aliasing is at least kept to a minimum due to Unreal Engine's accomplished anti-aliasing features. The overall impression is that the Xbox One and PS4 versions offer an equivalent visual presentation, save for those minor differences mentioned before. Sumu did a very nice job here. So how about the performance then? Well as with PlayStation 4, Sumo aims to deliver 30 frames per second on Microsoft's machine and, as you can see, the game has little trouble hitting that level of performance. The frame rate is stable at 30 frames per second with even frame pacing throughout and no hitches to be found. For a game with so many different versions available, it is interesting to see how close the Xbox One and PS4 versions of Snake Pass are. If you have an Xbox and are interested in the game, rest assured that this is a solid iteration of it. You're getting the full visual experience and it's all happening at a stable 30 frames per second. It's a good way to play. But how about the other console that we haven't looked at then, the PlayStation 4 Pro? As with most games these days, Snake Pass takes full advantage of Sony's new machine, and makes better use of it than many other recent titles. In fact, the leap over the original PS4 is so dramatic that it almost seems out of sync with your typical Pro release. Visually speaking though, the basic settings used on the PS4 Pro appear identical to the standard PlayStation 4, so things like grass density, post-processing, the water shaders, and more are kept identical between the two platforms. What it does add are two new display modes, a 4K mode and a standard mode. When using the 4K mode then, which the game defaults to, Snake Pass renders at 2688 by 1512 a rather strange resolution choice, but it manages to look quite good in action. The temporal anti-aliasing combined with the higher resolution produces a very clean presentation that's just a hair sharper than traditional 1440p. The standard mode then drops down to a full 1080p instead. Still a nice bump over the standard PlayStation 4 of course. But the real upgrade here stems from performance. When using this 1080p mode, Snake Pass is bumped up to a full 60 frames per second. Now the game is generally slow enough that 30fps still manages to work rather well, but there's no doubt that it feels more responsive and smoother at 60 frames per second. Given the choice, this is clearly the way to play. It just feels better all around. But how well does it actually hold that frame rate? 
while that is something which varies between different levels. Having played through around half the game using this mode, I can say that the majority of stages do manage to run just like this. A smooth, stable 60 frames per second. There's no hitching or skipping to be found, and it looks and feels great to play. But there is one level which presented the system with a number of issues. This stage really struggles to maintain a solid 60 frames per second on the Pro. The frame rate is still high enough that it feels mostly fluid during gameplay, but you wind up with some additional judder. It doesn't represent the majority of the game, but it can definitely be an issue, and I'll be curious to see how the later stages in the game hold up. So how about that 1512p mode then? This is an interesting one, and it surfaces a problem I had with Dishonored 2 last year. Essentially, the frame rate analysis tools detect the game is running at 30 frames per second, without fault. If you mouse through the footage one frame at a time, it even presents each frame in the correct order. A new frame is followed by a duplicate frame, which is followed by a new frame and so on. But if you look at the game in motion, it becomes clear that movement is not entirely fluid. To my eyes, this does not look like a smooth 30 frames per second even though, technically speaking, it kinda is. It's almost as if there is a variation in the distance which the camera travels between each frame, which results in an inconsistent sensation of movement. It's a strange problem, but I found it rather distracting. It gives the impression that the game just isn't running as smoothly as it really is. Do you guys notice it? Of course, we have to keep in mind that with the 60 FPS mode available, the Pro is still the best way to play Snake Pass on a console. But what if you'd rather not play it on a console? Well, thankfully, Snake Pass is also available on the PC, and as you might expect, it's a rather excellent version of the game. You get several presets here to choose from and support for arbitrary resolutions. Here's how the various settings stack up. I've kept the resolution setting at full across the comparison using the custom settings as the default preset scales the resolution down. As you can see though, the game does lose a lot when you drop all the way to low settings. This is likely reserved for low power portable machines as the lighting, shadow maps, and post-processing are all but eliminated. Once you jump up to medium settings and beyond however, it becomes all about refinement. You can see how the shadow maps are much sharper at higher detail settings for instance and the grass draws out further into the distance as well. In comparison, the console versions kind of slot in somewhere between medium and high settings, but knowing that each version of the game was customized for each specific platform, we can't really pigeonhole it into any single preset here. Unreal Engine is certainly at home on the PC, there's no doubt about it, but that's not to say that Snake Pass isn't still a demanding game. We found that you will need a high-end GPU to push the game at 60 frames per second, when using higher resolutions. Upper mid-range cards like the 980 Ti struggle to maintain 60 frames per second at 1440p. You can see the dips down into the 50s here that occur with these settings. We're using the very high preset at the moment, but lowering settings such as shadow maps and draw distance doesn't really have a significant impact performance and do not appear to be the bottleneck here. That's resolution. If you want to go up to 4K, things definitely slow down, but thankfully, if you can deal with a 30fps cap, it is possible to push the resolution up that high on such a card. Of course, if you're rocking something like a 1080 Ti, you shouldn't have any problems getting up to 60 frames per second at these high resolutions. Basically, what we have here is an excellent version of the game on PC, and with the right hardware, this is clearly the best way to play Snake Pass. It's very well done. Ultimately though, you can expect solid performance and a great presentation from all versions of the game. The performance and image quality is at its worst on the Switch, but it's still an attractive game and plays very well in portable mode. You really can't go wrong with any of the different versions. But with that, we've reached the end of this video, and if you enjoyed it, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow us on Twitter. Oh, and next time, we'll have a look at ukulele on all platforms, so be sure to check it out. And until next time, this is John signing off.